So is the 2020 MacBook Air M1 chip susceptible and able to be used for Adobe Premiere Pro editing. That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video and I've been using it for um, about a month now and it's absolutely amazing and I think it actually really does work. So that's your answer, yes. If you want further uh, explanations then just stick around and I'll show you some uh, sample footage of here. My old computer, a 2013 MacBook Air, um, I used to use my editing on that. It was my old computer, which by the way, I'm giving away for free, um, but I'm gonna start hosting a giveaway when I reach a thousand subscribers. So please subscribe if you wanna be a, a part of that contest. So, but I'm not gonna host the contest until until uh, people are subscribed. I've been using my 2013 MacBook Air for a lot of, a lot of my videos. And unfortunately it has been very, very slow. It's not built for fast, heavy work, and it's an excellent computer. I mean, I, I love MacBooks, but it wasn't built for, um, you know, these heavy Adobe Premiere Pro editing, and, you know, I had multiple tabs open. You know, when you're doing Photoshop and Lightroom and After Effects and Premiere Pro, so I'm gonna try to open up an old project of mine. I'm gonna explain to you the mistake that I made in this video that I thought was gonna be a, a rendering issue for me later on, but it ended, it ended up not being an issue. So, okay, so here, here's what I did. What I did was I, I filmed slow motion, so I needed to do 60 frames per second. I went outside, I filmed I filmed a scene, and then I came back inside to do the, you know, the interview of the video and, um, what happened was I forgot to take, I forgot to put it back into 24 frames per second because, you know, I'm filming right now in 24 frames per second because I'm just, I'm not doing slow motion, it's just me talking to the camera. And what I did was I accidentally uh, filmed something that was in 60 frames per second, forgot to change the settings, and then I filmed the entire rest of the review in 60 frames per second, which is obviously a large file size, right? So I'm so used to my old laptop that I was like, oh no, this is this is gonna be absolutely terrible because this is gonna take forever to edit. Oh, I'm such a fool, I can't believe I did that. And so I went in here and to my surprise, nothing happened, like absolutely no lag whatsoever. And this is coming from a very thin computer that is not really designed to be doing this heavy work, although I'm starting to think that now they are with this M1 chip. So this is amazing. So, okay, I'm gonna show you something. So you might not hear the audio because I'm not, we're not interested in the audio. I'm just playing this right now. This is my old video uh, that I did a couple weeks ago. And so this is a file sample and you can see how, how large this file is. This video ended up being about uh, six eight to eight minutes long. And um, so if I pause it here and you can see already that it's, it's, not, it's not buffering and I'm not working in proxies either. This is all raw right off the camera um, and just I just dropped it right into Premiere Pro because um, apparently this doesn't need proxies so I'm not working in proxy files. So this is, this is, these are all raw files so they're big sizes, right? And if I play the um, play button you can see that there's almost, you know, it takes a couple seconds for it to play, but I think that's normal. And um, so yeah, even scrubbing, you can see there's no skipping or lagging, uh, which is amazing for a MacBook. And so let me go to, okay, so this is the this is the interesting part. You see how right here it says the playback the playback resolution is one fourth of the quality. I can put it on full. I can actually put the quality on full with 60 frames per second on a little MacBook Air. And if I press play, absolutely no lag at all. And it's in full resolution. Um, I mean, if I was doing this on my on my old laptop, the one that I'm giving away for free, it would, this would, it wouldn't crash it, but it would just be absolutely horribly slow and this is a very big improvement and I'm so excited that now I get to edit so much faster just because the M1 chip is helping me. You know, there's no fan in this thing so maybe that's Apple's version of showing off that they don't even need a fan in order to, uh, in order to, for the CPU to process this insane information. And I would have this open, guys, I would have this open and then I would go here, here's what I do. I go, I would use 
YouTube once in a while, let's say for some reason I forgot how to do motion tracking using Adobe After Effects. So I'll go on YouTube or something. If I drag this window, sorry, if I drag this window all the way to the right, now I have this open. Okay, so if I use my three fingers now, all I have to do is slide to the left and I can work on a project. Let's say I was doing this tutorial or whatever. I could play this video, right? Um, this guy's showing me step for step how to do it. Um, and then I could go over here and then let's say, I mean, I'm in Premiere Pro right now, but I'm using After Effects. I could go in here and actually um, go back and forth. And so while my computer is rendering all this 60 frames per second and full resolution, I'm also using the internet and playing playing a video that's what probably you know the HD it's it's quality HD 1080p resolution while while I'm going so I actually like to go back and forth with Windows and use tutorials I could open Lightroom and After Effects and Photoshop and this thing just look how fast this is it just it just absolutely doesn't care what you throw at it all these things are opening in like seconds and this isn't something that I'm used to, right? Because I've had my 2013 MacBook Air for, well, how old? that was like eight years ago, right? So I've had that open for so long that I um, I'm so used to its its speed. I forget. I don't know what the core is on the on the on the 2013, but as strong as it was, um, it wasn't strong enough and it wasn't fast enough for me. The speed in which you edit really matters because it just makes your workflow so much easier and so much better when it's faster and your CPU, CPU can do all this work. And guys, so long story short, yes, this is a workhorse. This thing is absolutely amazing. And you know, the reason why I like using a laptop is because it's so mobile. I can take this to, to my friend's house. I can go, I can go visit my family, stay over for Christmas, and just like, you know, edit things while I'm moving around. I don't have to carry a, you know, a desktop and a tower with me all the time. That's the downside to a, um, you know, I like a mobile work site. And so if I can have a mobile work site that also has strong CPU and has very powerful uh, processors, then yes, I will definitely take that over. I'll take that any day over a stationary you know, station that you always have to go to. It's stuck at home. It's not very mobile. Um, so the 2020 MacBook Air M1 chip is absolutely, without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, this thing is absolutely amazing for using it for Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, guys, this is going to be it for this video. If this video was of any use to you, please just hit that subscribe button. It helps me and then it helps you. So I don't see why not. And so I'm going to be sticking around, so please see me for the next video. I'm going to be doing a review of the iPad Pro that's coming out soon. So I already pre-ordered it, so stick around if you want to see a review on that. I'm going to also be doing some in-field testing with that too, so um, I'm pretty excited about it. Okay, guys, thank you so much.